The EU, of course, uh, mulling over a new sanctions package uh, against Russia. What will go far enough? We're talking about the 10th sanctions package, and here we are looking at the first year milestone of the Ukraine war. I think the European Union, together with its allies, has never so quickly imposed such heavy sanctions packages on any country before. These sanctions are extremely important, and we have to see now what further measures uh, can be taken, and the European Commission will be proposing new sanctions. I think the fact that we are doing this, we have to be on the right side of history, it's just so important. Right, but what would make sense? Sanctions against Russian exports, for instance? Well, I think uh, these things can be discussed, should be discussed, and Luxembourg will be fully involved in these discussions. I am told that the European Commission is also considering uh, more measures as far as prop Russian propaganda is concerned and to counter that. So also that is a very important part of what we are doing uh, in our sanctions against uh, Russia. The fact that Russia has invaded another country was something that was, I think, from our point of view, so unbelievable. Uh, we have to react against it, and we have to stand together uh, in reaction against this. Hundreds of billions of dollars of Russian assets have been frozen, including 300 billion owned by the Russian Central Bank. And in Luxembourg alone, it's, I think, close to $5 billion of frozen assets. There's been a lot of talk about how these assets should be invested to fund Ukraine's reconstruction. Where are you on talks? Well, I think uh, Luxembourg has a responsibility also as an international financial center. Luxembourg has a frozen 5.5 billion uh, euros in uh, assets uh, of, uh, of Russia. This is very important. What we have to make sure is that there is no circumvention of sanctions. Now we need to see what else uh, can be done, and we are doing this together uh, with our allies. These discussions are very important. Uh, some are questioning whether the move is even legal to invest frozen assets belonging to Russia. I think a lot of questions can be asked around this. We have to make sure that this respects uh, the rule of law. This can be a precedent uh, because something like that has never done before. So I think this will entail uh, some more uh, discussions. Uh, Minister, one of the other big issues right now is the energy transition. We know that uh, the U.S. has implemented the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, $370 billion uh, uh, you know, to promote uh, green energy and green transition. Uh, Europe has cried foul. It has come back with its own plan. Uh, does that go far enough? Well, uh, let's see. I think uh, it's very important and it's a good thing that uh, the U.S. is also investing in uh, climate change and uh, countering, uh, acting against climate change with this measure um, that it has taken. Uh, in, the, in the EU, we have to see what we do. Uh, it is also important for us to invest in uh, transition uh, energies, in renewable energies, and supporting our companies also on the way. What I think would be uh, the wrong way uh, to go is uh, to fight uh, protection with protectionism. I think that is not in the interest of anyone, and I think we all should be very careful about uh, what we do. The truth of the matter is that there is international rivalry. How is this shaping the debate? How is this shaping supply chains, for instance? It is uh, shaping supply chains, but I think uh, also we have to be uh, very sure that we continue uh, to uh, support open markets and open economy on the world scale, and I think uh, open economies like Luxembourg, also Singapore, other countries who are, are really uh, allies in this kind of a debate need to uh, stand up and uh, uh, also discuss this here. World Trade uh, uh, Organization is also a very important actor. So international dialogue also in multilateral settings in a multilateral framework is for countries like Luxembourg very important. How are you assessing the risk to international cooperation in clean energy then, given what's transpired so far? I think we need to have international rules and standards that, uh, that uh, monitor and uh, shape this. We don't want any kind of uh, green bashing. And uh, there we need to work together in international fora so that we have common standards.